Hey everybody, it's Christine Paracas and we are back on the Career Invincibility Show and I'm so excited to introduce you to my guest today. She is an investment associate at the Expert Dojo. She spent over a decade in investment, due diligence, financial analysis, strategic planning, and business development in a variety of industries, including sensor and technology, semiconductor, oil and gas, asset management, private equity, and venture capital in, in the US, the UK, and Europe. And she's been investing, mentoring, and advising women entrepreneurs on their journey for some time now. And you know, I can't tell you this person after my own heart who works so beautifully in the world. And I'm super excited to introduce you to Victoria Meron. Victoria, welcome. Thank you so much, Christine. Uh, I. Uh, I'm looking forward to this interview. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, of course. And, you know, these days, right, in the post-COVID world that we live in and the world is as crazy as things are, we really don't get a chance to have everything planned out and, and to be able to rely on those plans and to move forward in any kind of organized, structured way. And that includes just getting on the phone today, right? <laughs> and so, um, you know, we, we have to go with what is. And, you know, as a person who helps people make their dreams come true, really, um, you know, let's talk a bit about what is happening right now in venture capital and for entrepreneurs out there who are still reeling, I would imagine, for some time in the post-COVID world that is still being defined? Absolutely. Um, so um, first, uh, let's talk about the VC world and investment world, and then I move to startups and entrepreneurs. Uh, in the VC worlds, we see that... Um, the venture capitalists per se, they started to be more conservative in terms of their investment. Um, they are trying to tighten the investment and they are become very particular in terms of uh, what type of the sectors and industries they want to invest in. Um, and I see it as opportunity because it helps the entrepreneur to keep the caliber high and receive um, the right amount of money uh, for the right um, uh, from the right investors. Uh, from the startup point of view, I understand that it's a bit hard. However, it uh, this opportunity gives them um, the timing to focus on more of uh, what exactly their plan is and how they can pivot during this time. Um, I look at it as our investments. Uh, we are the accelerator. We are pre-seed and seed stage accelerator. Uh, we invest internationally. So I get the exposure to international investment world and entrepreneurs. And I see that entrepreneurs that they literally are pivoted towards the sectors that um, investors, they invest more. Um, they are more successful. Giving you an example, for instance, during the COVID, um, one of our uh, portfolio companies, uh, it was the caregiving uh, company. So they damaged dramatically during that time because um, sending the nurses to the older people, it was a huge uh, risk uh, for uh, the daycare and uh, care facilities. So what they did, um, they brought in ventilator from China and they start to pivot toward the grocery shopping for these older people. And this actually helped them to double their, in, uh, their uh, revenue during this time and enabled them to receive more investment toward the VCs. So I see it as the opportunity that startups to be smarter, more efficient, the caliber of, you know, the uh, startups going up and also um, the CEOs that they are capable, they actually, they can shine during this time. Well, and that's the thing, you know, it's huge companies and big business has 
flourish during started and flourish during times of recession. And you know, there's no question that we're we're in one now. And um, it's the same as what I write about in my book, The Resilient Leader. We're talking about you know creating a flow plan. In that book, I introduce the seven barometers of resilience and. When mariners set out to go to sea, they have to anticipate what can go wrong. What are the obstacles? What are the things that we have to look out for? And so having a float plan, being able to understand what the chances are for things to come up and understand and know how have we prepared for that? So can we do a pivot? Can we um, switch our business? I have a client who was building pools before the COVID struck, and now he's uh, he was started. He began to deliver food, and also was thriving, and, and two and a half times his income. So, um, what do you think that? How can an entrepreneur best prepare, both in advance, during, and for the aftermath of a situation like a recession? Um, I truly be- believe that. The- right entrepreneurs and and good CEOs that they are capable, they have a good understanding of how to spend money, how uh, how to strategize their expansion, and um, how to receive money from a right investors. Giving you an example, uh, I see a lot of startups that they diversified their revenue. If one, uh, you know, type of revenue stream is going down, the other one is coming up, even before the recession. So diversification in revenue streams is very important, um, and that's coming from, you know, strategizing correctly in order to, if something goes wrong, how I can be prepared. The second one is the investment that they receive and how they invest uh, and how to strategize to spending this investment. Uh, We see that, for instance, uh, WeWork, that they raise dramatic amount of money. However, because they haven't been ready and they didn't have a plan to invest and uh, spend it rightly, they couldn't be successful. So it's not the matter of only raising the money. It's about strategizing how I need to spend this money and how much I need. If I am raising a certain amount that I believe that it's extra additional to my need and I am um, trying to uh, receive that investment, I need to be wise how to schedule this spending for the next couple of months or Am I able to, you know, uh, cut my operational cost in order to reserve it and stretch it out? Especially during this time, we see that it's a lot of entrepreneurs that they acted smartly because they received the investment from investors, angel investors, uh, accelerator, but they spent it wisely that now by the end of a year, they still have uh, you know, reserve going on and they're able to survive. So they spend it wisely. They spent it efficiently. Um, they try to strategize before COVID and after the COVID, it's it's the same strategy. If you are a good CEO, you are able to control the amount that you spend and uh, keep the portion of the investment uh, for uh, the time that uh, it's not going in your favor. Well, and one of the things I talk about in some of my work too is that we always have to anticipate something's going to go wrong, right? Yeah. We're never going to have enough. So what what are the, some of the money management things that we can do, like creating a reserve, you know, because before the stuff hits the fan is when we want to develop these good habits. And even as the fan is flaming the situation into worse and worse, there are things we can do on the ground and with the day-to-day that will allow us to get through. You know, what we hear each time in 2008 and then again, you know, the there are whole industries that are literally uh, going up in flames because they don't have the ability to be out of business for more than two weeks. 
But we on the small business level, we don't have that luxury, right? So let's talk a bit about what are some of the things we can do that um, both before, during, and then after, and maybe they're the same things, right? That being a good strategist, but you know, that's the big picture. What are some of the tactical things that we can do to shore up for any situation? Yeah, um, we see that during this, you know, timing that when the investment tightening and uh, uh, receiving investment is much harder, a couple of companies that I am seeing, they are much more focused in generating your revenue. And, uh, and this genera generating a revenue is coming from a different sources. Um, so how I can diversify my revenue and pivot toward the industries that they are related to me, but um, they, uh, they can be a good complement to my company. And uh, strategize in that regards that how I can increase that revenue or amount of the, you know, uh, employees. I see that startups, they get excited with the first check that they receive and they suddenly increase their employees. And uh, I look at it as, you know, the red flag because I believe that if you are a good CEO for a time being, you still can operate um, with the same amount of employees. And um, I see it with the companies that they already, for instance, re raised um, $2 million, that during this time, um, instead of like firing their employees, what they did, they leveraged their employees to work in another startups as well, as part-time, as an advisor. And, uh, and that actually helps the other startups as well to use their workforce and get some publicity for their future as well. And also cut the uh, employees' uh, salary, but not, you know, type of firing them and uh, cut the number of the employees, which is very hard for any CEOs to go through that route. So there are some sort of a tactic is going on that they can think about, like keep the operational uh, cost low as possible before the crisis, but some tactic can be used during the crisis when they think that how to strategize and pivot toward uh, the unusual out of box uh, solutions. Yeah, so that's very novel to think about. Um, I have not seen that yet in some of the things I've seen as other entrepreneurs are pivoting to be able to, you know, basically lend out the workforce. And I think that's so novel. And, you know, what I have seen are people who have diverted to respond to the current need, right? So, like you said, you know, diversifying revenue streams or people using, you know, I knew sale, I have sale maker clients who are uh, now making masks that are quite popular and, and doing very well and have gotten publicity for that as well. And so that's really exciting. And, um, you know, those things are all possible to do when you keep your eye out. So, you know, let's take a moment and pivot towards what we talk about here on this show are some of the zigs and zags that our successful entrepreneurial and business guests like yourself have taken to get where we are, because it's not a straight line, right? And, and invincibility is not something I think that we're generally born with. We can yeah. develop it like a muscle. And Absolutely. so let's talk a bit about your story, because I know it's a good one. And it wasn't a, you didn't get a silver spoon handed to you to be the success <laughs> of our today. That's very kind of you. Yes, um, I actually, I am a millennial and um, I've been in two uh, kind of crises, one in uh, 2008 and one today. And uh, at the time that um, the first crisis happened, um, I still was